Hello, I'm Dr. Joanne Rutkowski. I'm a professor of music education at the Pennsylvania State University. And I'd like to talk to you about the nature of young children's singing voices, which has been the focus of my research. Why don't some children sing in tune? And we know many children and also adults who do not sing in tune. Well, I have found that very few of these persons actually have issues with hearing. We often say they don't have a musical ear. And I find that's typically not the case. There's some rare instances where that might be, but typically that's not the case. The issue is that many of them don't know how to use their singing voices. Um, that comes from a lack of appropriate guidance in early childhood when they were younger. Maybe somebody wasn't singing to them. And the other thing I find is children are often told to be quiet. Well, singing and exploring your voices makes noise. And so I'll be at the mall or at church and I'll hear people tell their child who's squealing, oh, be quiet, be quiet. And we certainly need to know, learn how to be appropriate in various settings, but children need to learn to use their voices. So my work is focused on the use of singing voice. And I focus on this rather than intonation. And this is difficult if you're a music teacher or a musician because the minute we hear a musical sound, we, we want to focus on, ooh, it's out of tune, or ooh, that's not right. And instead, I'm going to ask you to, to put that aside for a while and focus on the use of the voice that someone has. The range that somebody sings can be indicative of the type of voice being used. For example, a young child might sing, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. They're using a very narrow range, and that tells me that they're using a lower register. But for older children, or for adults, we, we learn to stretch our voices beyond um, the range that is appropriate for a register. So you might hear um, a middle school girl or an adult sing, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, and they stretch the voice. And so range does not always tell us what kind of voice is being used. What does tell us more is the register. Now, register is, is sort of like gears on a car. Um, if you're driving an automatic, you might hear your car shift gears. If you drive a standard, um, you shift gears at various speeds. And it's sort of like that. And I call these, by very sophisticated names, lower, middle, and upper registers. You might have heard terms like chest voice and head voice. And I tend to stay away from those because they have other connotations. So let's talk about each of these. The lower register. These are children who use their voice below middle C. They have a very narrow range in their voice. So if they were singing, are you sleeping, you might hear something like this. Are you sleeping, are you sleeping, brother John, brother John. They're sort of stuck in that lower part. It's a heavier sounding voice, if you notice that, in lower register. This is what we sometimes call chest voice. I don't like to use that. It doesn't have anything to do with our chest. And what I find is around eight years old and older, these persons can extend this register up in a higher range. And that's the example I gave you with the happy birthday, pushing that register up a little bit. And many adults use this register. You hear them in church, you know, they can sing a little bit, but then they can't sing in tune because they can't get their voices in an upper register. The happy birthday issue is one I really like to use. Um, and it's a good example of also how the ear is not the problem, but use of voice is the problem. I hear this a lot. <clears throat> happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear John, happy birthday to you. Well, the first half was in tune. It was great. The second half, everything fell apart. And I don't believe that person can't hear. I believe that person can't flip out of the lower register to actually sing, happy birthday. And I've got to be able to flip to do that. So that's lower register. And I have an example for you of a child in lower register. You will hear on this recording a teacher playing each of those patterns, a pattern is a measure, playing it on a tone bell. Then you will hear the teacher sing, and then you will hear the child sing. See the bird, see the bird, in the 
The next is middle register. And let me give you an example of this shift between lower and middle register. I think you'll hear my voice do this. Um, we try to disguise these, but I'm not going to disguise it. So I'm going to start in lower, and you'll hear the shift to middle. Ah. Uh, did you hear that shift? That's into middle register. Children use middle register generally from middle C up to about A. In fact, I like to say D to A. Middle C is really on the cusp of lower register. It's a small range. It's only that D to A. And in older children and adult females, this range overlaps with lower register. So I can sing up to that A in lower register. And listen to the quality. Here's lower register only. Ah, uh, hear the hard quality? Now I'm going to flip into middle register. Ah, uh, did you hear the flip? Okay, so that's often what adults and, children, and older children won't do. Here again is ex an example for you of a child in middle register, and you'll hear the little bit different quality of this voice. You'll also notice, and I said don't focus on intonation, but you'll notice some of the patterns are actually in tune. So the ear is not the problem for this child. The child can't get out of middle register. See the bird, see the bird, in the tree, in the tree, see it fly. So upper register is a third register. I'm going to start in my low register. I'm going to flip to my middle, which you'll see is very narrow, and then I'll flip into upper, and you'll hear the whole spectrum. So here's my low. Ah, do you hear those flips? And the upper register is the higher voice. For children, it's above B flat, above middle C. Sometimes we call this the head voice, and I don't think it has anything to do with your head, so I don't call it head voice. Did you notice how much lighter in quality it was? Much lighter in quality. And I find that if adult females sing in this upper register, you can actually extend the voice down pretty low in upper register. So here's an example of that. pretty low in upper register. If I flip to a different register, I can get lower. So I flipped and I could get lower. So here's an example of a child using upper register. Um, and you'll notice that this child also sings quite well in tune, but some of the patterns, particularly lower in the voice, tend to be a little sharp, and I find that that often happens with young children. See the bird, see the bird In the tree, in the tree See it fly, see it fly Over me, oh Sky. In the sky, there 
I've used these registers to develop a singing measure based on use of voice. And you'll see there's more than three there because there are refinements within each of these registers. A pre-singer and a speaking range singer uses low register. A limited range singer and initial range singer uses middle register. And a singer uses upper register. All of these children might be singing in tune within their register, or they might not be singing in tune. A singer who sings, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, I would call a singer because the upper register is working. Now we would need to work on intonation. So I encourage you when you're listening to children and you're listening to adults sing, even though you're musicians and you want to hear that intonation, listen for what's happening to the voice. And if you're working with others who are having difficulty with these registers, first get them to use those registers. And I think you'll find for most of them, the intonation will come pretty quickly. The ear's not the problem. It's learning how to use the voice appropriately.